welcome to the Turn Up the Volume on Your Voice podcast with Charlotte Foster. Turn Up the Volume on Your Voice is a podcast all about podcasting. My name is Charlotte and I've been podcasting since 2017. Before that, I was in radio. In fact, first time I went live behind a microphone was in 1998. Yes, that was last century. I love listening to podcasts, making podcasts and helping others make podcasts too. All through my business, Charlotte Foster Podcasts. I promise you I am far more creative when it comes to podcasting than I am when it comes to making up names for businesses. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of Turn Up the Volume on Your Voice. I hope you are well. I hope you are continuing on during these uncertain times. It is definitely still an uncertain time as lockdown looks like it's set to be continuing here in the UK. Across the world, similar measures are also taking place as we battle the the global pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic. And it means that we're all in slightly different ways of working at the moment. Lots of people working from home where they can. And lots of people also have children at home for homeschooling as well. So it is definitely uncertain times. But even in uncertain times, there are still a few questions that keep coming back to me as a podcaster from people who are just starting out in particular on their podcast journey. I don't hear this question very often from people who've been doing it for a longer time, but it may well affect you anyway. This episode is for you if you hate your voice. Yeah, it's one of those questions. Well, it's not really a question. It's more advice seeking. It's one of those things that people ask me or say to me all the time. They say, so Charlotte, I just can't stand listening to my voice. I hate my voice. It sounds terrible. Well, here's the thing. Number one, your voice really doesn't sound terrible. It just sounds different to how you think it should sound. Now, there is science to back me up on this as well, because so many of us actually dislike the sound of our own voice. There's a term for it. So, you know, science is on my side. It's called voice confrontation. Now, when you're listening back to a recording of your voice, whether it's on a podcast or if you've been doing a recording elsewhere, I'm willing to bet my house, so I'll bet the mortgage, that what you dislike about your voice is that it doesn't sound how you think it should sound. And I'll go even further and say it doesn't sound as low as you think it should sound you hear it and you're thinking, my goodness, who is that squeaky voiced person talking back to me? That can't be me. That's not what I sound like. That's not what I hear when I'm talking. And you're right. That isn't what you hear when you're talking, because the way you hear your voice is different to the way other people hear your voice and the way you hear your voice when you are listening to a recording of it. So as I'm talking to you now, live as such, I am hearing my voice through internal bone conduction and through the airwaves. It's coming to me through the airwaves into my ears that way, but it's also coming to me in like internally through bone conduction. If you are a runner or maybe even a cyclist, you've probably heard of bone conducting headphones. That's the same theory. It's the same way. So we hear our voices internally and externally when we are talking. And it's that bone conduction that is the difference, because when we are listening to a recording or listening to somebody else talking, we are only hearing the voice through airwaves that goes into our ears through airwaves. We're not hearing it internally. We're hearing it just externally. And the bone conduction is the bit of that process that just lowers the tone. It gives the tone of the voice that little more depth and richness And let's say it a little bit extra sexiness, yeah? And nobody else hears that. You're the only person that hears that when you talk, which is a shame, really. What a waste. What a waste. So that difference in what you're hearing compared to what the rest of the world is hearing is one reason why it's really jarring to listen to your voice. There's actually been some really deep 
psychology based studies into this and explains a lot about why you don't like your voice. It's not all down to hang on, that's not what I expected it to sound like. I am not an expert in this side of things. I promise you, I know I sound like an expert right now, but this is not my area of expertise. But there's a really good TED talk out there by Rebecca Kleinberger, and she goes way into why we don't like our voice in much more depth than I can or will. And I will put a link to that TED talk in the show notes. So go and listen to that. So that's why you're not going to be very keen on your voice in particular. But how do you get over that? How do you get past that? Well, I'll be honest. Um, I've been doing this now for 20 odd years, talking to myself and listening back. And yeah, I am pretty much over it. How did I get over it? I had zero choice. This was the industry I chose part of being in radio is you have listen back. So you and your boss sit in a little studio and you listen back to what you have done and it gets dissected. A nicer way of saying it gets torn apart to shreds and not just listening back sessions. I would be editing stuff that I've recorded and daily, daily hearing my voice go out on air. So I really and truly just had to go that's what my voice sounds like. Get on with it. Move on. Get on with it. Grow a pair. Suck it up. Which is very easy for me to say 20 years down the line to you to just suck it up. So how can you get used to the sound of your voice? Because that's what it is. That's all you're doing. All you need to do is just get used to that difference. How can you get used to the sound of your voice so that it no longer becomes a thing and that you don't cringe every time you listen because you shouldn't be cringing every time you listen to a recording of your voice because I promise you your voice sounds absolutely fine. So we don't necessarily have 20 years do we but what we can do is we can squidge 20 years worth of listening to ourselves into a short time period and a way to do this is to record everything you do and listen back to it. So there's some really easy ways of doing it. There's a couple of different methods you can use. One method is if you are a list maker, as I am, you are now no longer allowed to write down any of your lists. So all your lists, your shopping list, your to-do list, your things to think about list, your important information list, your important ideas list, those post-it notes that go on the wall normally to remind you. Nope. You are recording all of those on your phone, on your little voice memo app on your phone. And then you have to listen back to them to get the information. That's a really quick and easy way of having to record and listen back and make that listening normal. So it's a normal thing to listen to your voice. It's just part of what you do. So it doesn't become a big thing. You know, it's not a weekly, oh gosh, my podcast has to come out. I need to record it and I need to edit it, which means I have to listen to my voice for hours on end. Oh, goodness me. You're just listening to your voice in an everyday setting. It's normal. Another way is you can just grab a book off the shelf and read a couple of paragraphs from the book into your phone, recording it and listen back. Maybe you could find a speech that would be good. You could deliver a speech again, read it over and over again, record it, read it and record it, read it and record it and listen back. Just keep listening back. It really is a case of just getting used to it. Now, I find it would be easier to do the lists because you're not going to be critiquing what's being said quite so much and it just becomes a little bit normal. But that's just me. There are all the other options out there. Remember, it's just you listening to these. So if you want to be a bit creative with the way you deliver those messages or deliver those passages from a book or deliver that speech or the poem or whatever it is you're reading out loud, have a play around with it. You can do some vocal gymnastics and have some real fun with it, but just get used to hearing your voice. Another way is make sure you're wearing headphones when you are recording. So recording anything, recording your podcast, recording stuff into your phone if you can. If you're wearing headphones and you are monitoring what you're hearing on headphones, then 
you are hearing a little bit more of the airwave stuff. So you're hearing a little bit more of what is being heard by other people rather than what you're hearing. I will always, always, always record wearing headphones. It's just how I've always done it. But it does give me an idea or a closer idea of what I sound like. Another couple of tips are about being relaxed. So the more relaxed you are, the slower you will talk and the more slower you talk, the lower your voice will be more naturally. You know what it's like when you're dead excited about something. Your voice just gets higher and higher and higher and higher and higher because you're really excited and you have to tell somebody about it and you have to do it right now. Yeah, sound familiar? That's what happens when I get excited. So if you are relaxed and talk slowly, that will naturally bring the tone of your voice down to a place where you expect it to be. And you can also make sure that the script you have, if you're reading off a script, you know my thoughts about reading off a script, but if you are reading off a script, make sure you have written that script in a conversational way. So write it as though you are saying it. Don't write it for the eye to read. You're writing it for the ear to hear. I'm sure you've heard it. You must have heard it either on podcasts or on radio shows or even on the telly as well. Somebody will be speaking and it just doesn't sound natural. So it jars. It really does jar compared to what everyone else is sounding like. So if you can make your script conversational, it will flow better and it will sound nicer and you're less likely to get hung up on the sound of your voice because it just sounds more natural. Thank you for listening. I would love to hear your tips for getting used to the sound of your own voice. How do you find the sound of your own voice? What was it like for you when you first heard it? Was it a shock? Do get in touch. I would love to uh, hear from you. Uh, You can get in touch in all the normal ways, except the normal ways have slightly changed. If you are paying attention at the beginning of the podcast, you will have heard that Charlotte Foster Productions is no more. It is now Charlotte Foster Podcasts. So that means all my socials have changed. Are you paying attention? Pen and paper. You can get in touch with me via Facebook and Instagram at Charlotte Foster Podcasts. You can get in touch with me on Twitter at last. At last, I have a Twitter handle that makes sense. At CF Podcasts. Yes, it makes sense. And you can also get in touch with me on LinkedIn as well. I am Charlotte Foster there. Stay safe, stay strong. And I'd love to hear how you're getting on with listening to the sound of your voice without cringing too much or at all.